YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop. It is new equipment day and honestly, truly new adventure day today. What I've got packaged up here behind me is a brand new Miller Dynasty 210. New TIG welding machine, do stick welding and TIG welding. Let me be really clear up front, I am not here to teach you how to TIG weld, but if you've ever had TIG welding on your bucket list like I have and want to follow a journey of what it's truly like to learn how to TIG weld when you've never touched a TIG torch, then this video and the ones coming up after it are gonna be for you. I'll do what I can to review the machine, go through, we'll unwrap it, I'll show you what all is in here, what equipment I got, but again, I am not a TIG welding expert. I've got decent experience with a little bit of MIG welding, some wire feed, stick welding, but I have never touched a TIG torch before. I'm going to be following Pacific Arc Welding. He's got a TIG learning course out there on uh, TIG welding aluminum, so I'm going to be following his course and we can keep up on what this looks like on my learning journey as we get through the next few weeks. Also, clear up front, hey, I've got a brand new Miller Dynasty into here. This is not the type of machine you need to purchase to learn how to TIG weld. This is way more machine than uh, what I'm probably going to need for the near future, but had an opportunity to get this one, so I went for it. You know, unpack it and enjoy it. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there, check out the other videos on here on machining, welding, knife making, just everything else going on in the Blades to Be shop. And uh, if you're interested in following some TIG welding, stay tuned. Should be a good group of videos on here as uh, I jump into this. See how long it takes me to figure this out over the next several weeks. First off, let's get this unpacked. Let's see what all I purchased from Baker Gas to get going. Uh, as usual, I'm sure I purchased more than I need, but hey, let's have a look at what this machine came with. Come on. All right, we got some gloves and accessories. We'll go through this here in a minute on the counter. Well, there it is. Go Big Blue. Well, at first glance, it seems to have survived the trip all right. It's very well mounted onto this pallet. All comes already pre-assembled. We've got the coolant unit underneath on top <clears throat> nice spring carry handle so seems to have made the trip okay let's get it off of this pallet and we'll get it inside where we can start putting it all together So two person lift to get this off the pallet and I removed the little silver brackets on the bottom and those four screws I used to attach the head onto the cooler. It was actually just sitting on the angle brackets. It was not connected at this point. So I went ahead and put those screws in there. Cool, that's it. Here's this welder on the cart. Feels pretty solid. It does come with an eight foot cord on here, but the cord doesn't come with an end. So I'll get that ordered so that I can uh, get this thing plugged in when that shows up. Pretty minimal assembly on here. Let's open up the rest of these boxes and see what else we've got. We've got the coolant down there, I know for sure. And we'll see what else we've got in the rest of these boxes and get this thing ready to go. All right, so we've got accessory kit here. Pretty sure this is the bracket to mount the foot pedal on the side of the machine. And looks like some brackets probably to coil hoses up on, hang the TIG torch on. So I'm guessing that's what we've got here. Another what looks like a cable bracket. Yeah, a bunch of hardware. I'm guessing that's the chain to go around the back of that bottle and hold the bottle in place. And nice, yes, we've got the instructions right here in the box. So that is the bracket for the foot pedal, chain for around the back. Not really seeing what those other small ones are for yet. May have to figure that out. Okay, 
Okay, here is the wireless foot pedal. Comes with some batteries. Comes with the plug. And there is our foot pedal. Nice. Spring feels good on that. And that's where those four AA batteries are going to go under there. All right, we've got our work clamp, gas hose, TIG torches in here, and all right, here's our starter kit. So we've got a couple of different sizes of tungsten, some collets, gas screens, a six, a seven, and a number eight ceramic cup. So we've got one eighth, three thirty seconds, and a one sixteenth collet and setup. Got our gas regulator in here. That is everything that came with the Dynasty itself. And then we've got some other things here that I purchased. So I got some 332nd. Yeah, so I got a couple packs of 7018 1/8 and one of 332nd. I do plan to do a little bit of stick welding with it as well. So right now I only have a wire feed. Gonna be nice to have a little stick welder here. And that's why I got this roll of cable so that I can make a positive and negative lead for stick welding. So I mean, I've got the work clamp, but it's fairly short, I think, that came with it. So anyway, I can make a little bit longer work clamp and I can make a, a stinger lead out of that. And a couple pair of TIG gloves. These ones are by Black Stallion. I went with what they recommended. Again, I've never TIG welded before. So went with what they thought was a good TIG glove. They said they sell a lot of those ones. I've got a couple of extra connectors for making those other two leads that I need. And we've got a stinger. I'm old school. I like these screw type stingers for stick welding. I know most people like the clamp type, but I really like the screw type. So personal preference. But to me, these are always very comfortable to hold on to. You can bend the rod to whatever angle you want. So uh, that's what I've always used for stick welding. So we'll go with that. And another work clamp to go on the other end of that one. We'll get those leads put together here in a little bit. Rest of what's in here. I got some tubes to hold the tungsten. Everything I've read about TIG welding is cleanliness, cleanliness, cleanliness. So try to keep everything from getting dirty, getting dusty as it's around the shop with all the grinding I do in here. I definitely need some help keeping everything clean. So here's some small tubes to hold the tungstens. Got a couple of the, the longer tubes. Comes in a variety pack of different colors, so some longer tubes to hold filler rod. So be able to keep all those taken care of. And I got a couple of small, shorter ones to put my 7018 rod in. So I got one for the 332nd and one for the 18th. And a couple of different packs of filler rod. So I've got some 18th aluminum, some 332nd aluminum, and then I should have a little bit here for regular steel and a little bit here for some stainless. Ultimately want to get to. As I mentioned, I'm going to be working through this course from Pacific Arc Welding. He's a guy out of Canada, Dusty. He's got some great videos on YouTube if you really want to learn how to TIG weld. And then he's got a full course that he offers online. Work at your own pace. We're going to be focused on aluminum. So we'll be working on that. And I didn't get this from Baker's, but I did order this. I usually order my material from a company called Midwest Steel and Aluminum. So I just ordered a bunch of these three inch by six inch by one eighth pieces of aluminum. And these are gonna be all my practice welding coupons as we go through this welding course. 
Well, there's the main pieces and parts of what I purchased in this. As I said up front, I probably went a little bit too all in on the front end. That uh, tends to be what I do on different things. You can get into a TIG welding setup for a whole lot less. You don't need everything that I've got going on here. And uh, you may not want to have the stick welding options that eliminate a lot of pieces when you first get it. But this is the package that I put together so far. We'll take the rest of this video and we'll assemble the parts. We'll get the cables made up. We'll get the, the plug ordered. We'll get that in and uh, we'll make sure we have all that. We'll We'll get to the point where we get this fired up by the end of this video and in subsequent videos like I said I'll be showing you just my kind of week-to-week -week updates on how it's going I'll put some full videos out there with a little bit more detail and if you just want to watch the short snippets I'm gonna put some shorts out there as well a minute or less and you can just keep up on the progress of you know how long it takes me to learn how to TIG weld I mean where do I get after a week two weeks three weeks uh, maybe give you a sense of what it's really like if you're tackling this for the first time so Stay tuned, we're gonna clean this up, get everything assembled, get this thing plugged in and fired up. All right, so there's not a whole lot to get this together. We're gonna to get the bottle on here, get this power cable out of the way. So I am actually going to use a cord to power this. So I'm gonna be putting a regular cord end on here so I can plug it into a 50 amp wall socket that I have. Uh, I'm only using single phase power so I'm not going to be using the third leg. I won't be using that red wire. So I'll be cutting that back and tucking that back out of the way and we're just going to use green, black, and white. But like I said, I'm going to put that onto a cord. So let me route this so that it's more or less out of the way of... There we go. I think that should be nice and out of the way. We'll put one of those cable hangers over there. So we'll have one cable hanger for the cord and then one cable hanger for the torch and our work clamp leads. Get the bottle on here and the regulator, spin it around, fill it up with coolant and get the torch and everything mounted on the front end. Let's get a few things bolted in place. All right, so we've got left hand threads. So red and blue down here, left hand for water. And gas is a right hand thread up here. In the book it says 50-50 solution. On this bottle it says use this at full strength. So I think we're going to use it at full strength. It is the part number recommended by Miller on there. It says it takes about one and a quarter gallons. I don't see anywhere on here where, oh wait a minute, here's my, here's my full line. I think I do see it. Okay, I did. I found the cold full line. Alright, so beside the bottle there is a another piece of plastic so it shows where we want to get to full. It says it's about one and a quarter gallons that it's going to take. They gave us four so we definitely have plenty. 
All right, even though it's a clear liquid, I'm starting to see it moving up on my side over here. I'm gonna take a lot more than a quarter gallon to get that the rest of the way full, I can tell you that right now. I'm only down to there. The last little bit filled up super fast. I'm guessing once I run it and it circulates, it might take a little bit more, but that one and a quarter gallons definitely did it. All right, just to show you what I'm looking at over here, here is that full line. So you can see you got this whole section right up here beside it. So there's our full cold line. After the first gallon, it was way down here. So it only got about halfway up, but it barely took any to fill it that rest of the way. We may have to, uh, like I say, top it up a little bit after it runs. There's a filter, you're supposed to clean that every 100 hours. I think that is just about it. Got our cables on there, got our bottle on, got all our lines mounted. Well, that's the bulk of it. We just have a plug left to take care of, so not a whole lot to get this assembled. It comes pretty much ready to go out of the box. Didn't take much to get the regulator, a couple batteries in, a couple cords plugged in. So I've got a plug coming. I'll go get that, and we'll get that taken care of for power. And uh, then we'll also get these stick leads assembled and put together so that I've got another little bit longer ground clamp and definitely a longer lead for stick welding. We'll get those assembled and put together. And that's pretty much it. We'll be ready to do our dry arc dabs, step one of our learning course. All right, before I finish up that plug, I'm just gonna clean up a couple things here off the bench. Get some of this TIG rod in the tubes. Get this put away in the drawer so I'm not losing track of anything. All right, I think we're gaining. We got most everything cleaned up, put away, got some organization. So I've got some 332nd 7018 in here that's sealed up. I've got some 18 7018 in here that's sealed up. Got a little bit, two, uh, two complete packs of that 1 8 wouldn't fit in one of those. So I've got a little bit of 7018 left in here. I'll use this up before it goes bad in there. It just, you know, absorbs moisture. You just want to try to keep as much moisture off of these things as you can. When it comes to the TIG stuff, everything I've read is you've got to keep it super clean. So I've got some little tubes here for some tungsten. I've got some 332nd, 2% uh, laminated. I've got some 18 2%, and I've got some 2% serrated. So I've got the grays and the blues, kind of matches up in the colors there. So pretty easy to keep track of that. And for the filler rods, Got three different types of filler rod. So I've got two different types of aluminum. I've got 3 seconds and 1 8 in here. That's the ER4043 for aluminum filler rod. I've got some ER70S 1 16th diameter for mild steel. And I've got some ER308L 1 16th diameter for stainless steel. Mild steel, I'll probably try pretty soon. Stainless steel, everything I've read, that's pretty complicated. So we'll definitely go through our course get some learning, get some experience under our belt before we work on that. So again, we've got everything organized, cleaned up, mostly put away. And the power cord came in for the welder, so we'll be able to get that on the end of the welder and get that plugged in here before too long. But real quick, let's wrap up the rest of these pieces and parts I've got on the bench. So we're gonna go ahead and finish making our two leads. We're just gonna go ahead, strip some cable really quick, cut it, get our DINs connectors put on there, get the stinger put on. Then we'll get everything cleaned up, then we'll get that power cord put on and get this thing plugged in. So let's quickly, I'll bring the camera over here to the bench and let's go ahead and take a look at these DINs plugs and get this put together.
Well, I've got this roll of 1-0 wire. It was 100 foot long. The work clamp that came with that TIG welder is about 12, 13 feet. So when I do some stick welding, I know I'm going to want longer than that. So I took and I pulled about 35 feet off of that roll. We'll use this to make a new work clamp that's a little longer. And then that should leave me roughly 65 feet or so left on this roll to make a good long stinger. So this end, a little bit kinked up and chewed up. So I'm going to go ahead and knock that off of there just to have a nice clean start point. These DINs plugs with the size of the wire that I'm using. I shouldn't need any kind of a shim. Should be able to just put that right in there. All right, we got a nice fit up there. It's a big ball end, so it flares that out pretty nice. Slide our coupler back on top of that. And there's one end done. There it is. All right, we do have a little shim in the box for this one that we can put underneath the screw. So that is nice and securely in there. It's got a shim, really got that down in there tight. So that kind of slides up into tapered hex in there. And then that's gonna push back onto our stinger. And then it's just that last little bit you can see in there, that last little turn or so, it's gonna clamp that stinger down onto our rod. Well, there's a 65 or so foot stinger. We'll just do the same thing for our work clamp here. And there we've got it. We've got a 35 foot work clamp done. All right, next up, let's get the power plug wired up on this. All right, so it does come with a little sleeve adapter. So I've got that put on there. Let's get it tucked up in there and then we'll get this wire out of the way. So again, this has the option to be either single phase or three phase. That red wire is if you're gonna use three phase. We are not, so we're just gonna use the black, the white, and the green. And I know I'm gonna clean these off, so let me go ahead and knock off these crinkly ends here. We'll cut them to length in a minute. All right, we got that sleeve in about the middle. Get that red wire tucked completely out of the way there. All right, we're gonna tuck this red wire, tape it completely out of operation. All right, that should make it pretty nice for unplugging right there. Let's get the torch up here and we'll get the torch assembled really quick and then we are ready to get this thing plugged in. All right, first I gotta grind up one tungsten. We'll get that done and we'll get that torch assembled.
All right, that should be assembled. That's pretty much the minimum stick out I can run at the moment. It's hitting the back of my back cap because it's a full length tungsten. Ultimately, probably want to shoot for a little bit more, but I was told to get started, keep it really short. Probably going to dip my tungsten anyway. We're just going to go ahead and try and do a couple of arc startups just to see that we have everything assembled correctly get the settings on the welder done and then uh, i'm going to work on some dry arc dabs will be my first project but i'm going to lay out a plate to do that first but for right now let's at least just try and fire up a couple of arcs and see what happens so got this little torch holder from amazon good way to keep that protected on the bench let's go plug this thing in assembly is done we are all put together Let's go ahead and fire this up, get it plugged in, go through these menus, get it set for just an initial aluminum TIG setup. And I'm gonna go through, and like I said, I'll try and just do a couple of dry arcs just to make sure the foot pedal's working, make sure it's going. It's time for contact. Okay, <laughs> saw a little flash and a poof and nothing. I thought, wow, something happened. Okay, just has a, takes a second to all kick on. All right, coolant lines pressurized. We'll give that a minute to run and see how much our coolant goes down. Oh yeah, coolant went down. A fair bit over here. All right, so I topped the coolant up. Now we're pretty much used right at about that one and a quarter gallons that we expected to use. The foot pedal sending unit, obviously that came on right away. I believe we just hit power on this one. And yes, we've got green light, green flashing light over here. I'm gonna double check the instructions, but I think that's what we're looking for. So that should be ready to go. You really only need to push that button for pairing. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to turn it on. Maybe if I'd have just pressed it, that would have activated it enough to turn it on. I'm not sure. Green status, flashing status is what we're looking for. So it is paired, it is operational. That is ready to go. Let's go through some menus. So for our process, I want to do AC TIG high frequency start. So that is good. Amperage. I can only need about 130. I'm gonna go double check that. Trigger, foot pedal. All right, that's what I want. Pulse. I don't think I need anything to do with that for right now. AC frequency, 120 hertz, I like that. AC balance, I'm gonna double check. I think I want 70%. Tungsten diameter, I am using 1 8 tungsten at the moment. All right, pre-flow. I want half a second for pre-flow. Post-flow. I want about, we'll go, we'll start with five seconds. We'll see how that does. Actually, we'll start with six and time it. Okay, it's good. Cooler setup. All right, let me set this auto power off to 45 minutes in case I'm forgetting to do something. All right, let me go grab my notes, check a couple things, and we'll see if that is where we want to get this started. All right, we're gonna make a tweak. We're gonna put this up to back up to where it was at 150 amps. Balance, I wanna go to 70. Let's get our plate cleaned up here. All right, I'm gonna stack on a couple plates, make sure I don't blow through. All right, the actual exercise here is to lay out some spots, really get a sense of how wide I'm making a puddle. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to fire up an arc a couple of times before I lay out the plate and set it up for that. Let's just test and make sure we have everything working properly. So I'm going to try to hold it fairly close, get this comfortable here. That 
feels pretty good. I think I've got a pretty good visibility for a sight line there. If I were to try to travel down that, that seems pretty good. All right, I did test my gas flow. I made sure that I've got gas, I've got it set. I'm gonna try to ease on this pedal and work my way up to a full get some heat. Back off slowly. Well, here goes nothing. First time ever firing up a TIG torch. Let's see how this goes. First one caught me by surprise, so there's the very first one. I just let it go for a second. I don't think I contaminated it. I don't even think I got my tungsten hot enough. So there we go. All right, that's pretty surprising. Now I know a little bit about what to expect. Let's try another one. Okay, I didn't run that near long enough. I don't think I even pushed down on the pedal to get up to temperature enough. So let me try a couple more here and see if we can get the hang of this. Alright, that time I got some heat. I got a little puddle, probably too much dimple. Uh, my tungsten still seems pretty clean. But I definitely kind of dirty looking in there, so I'm not sure what's causing so much contamination looking. But not too much stray arc. I seem to have about the right distance. I don't know, let me knock out one more. See what we got here. We got a dimple. Tungsten still looks more or less shiny. My arc looks pretty good to me for not knowing what I'm looking at. That one was a little cleaner, less contamination in there. Yeah, definitely making some heat on my table. I need to get some kind of a better welding table set up. But this is good for just a couple of shots here today. Okay, I definitely cranked on the foot pedal and made some more heat that time. Backed off probably a little too fast, almost blew through. So getting braver and worse at it.
Well, I would say that that is enough experimenting and getting going for today's fire up and test of the machine. Well, overall, I am, I don't know, I guess I'm happy. You don't even know what to expect at this point, never done it before. But from what I watched, from what I was supposed to do for a lesson, I at least got some arcs started. I got the puddle to start to form. Somewhere here, I must have, I must have touched my tungsten. I look pretty contaminated on this last couple. I'm seeing lots of black and looks of contamination. So somewhere I must have dipped it. I need to clean my tungsten and get another one in there. And here... Too close to the edge and clearly just my overall my plate was getting too hot so that is pretty nasty interesting looking obviously not what we're looking for on that corner so things started to get a little bit too hot there at the end but at least you know getting a feel of the foot pedal get a concept of where to hold this i'm going to go ahead and follow my lesson a little better and i'm going to lay this out the way that i'm supposed to try to control for the the width of the puddle that i'm creating and you know, we'll knock out a few plates like that and get some decent practice in. See how much I can improve this over uh, the course of the next week or so. But I think that is a good spot to go ahead and call a wrap on this video. We'll take one last look at this machine all assembled and we'll wrap this one up. Here's a little better close up of how I was doing on that exercise. So there's number one, didn't even get hot enough. Number two, not bad, a little dirty though. Number three seemed a little cleaner, but a little bit of blow off on the side. Yeah, lots of stray off the side. Almost blew through on that one. Clearly have some contamination starting in on there. So another almost blow through, kind of splattery. And then, wow, immediate feedback of what it looks like if you get your piece too hot with aluminum. I mean, just has that crinkly, looks like skin look to it. Flip that over and just a melty mess. So yeah, I'm clearly not ready to go do anybody's uh, million dollar project on TIG welding right now. I'd have that destroyed in a heartbeat. But you got to start somewhere. There is the start for me. Only improvement coming from now on. Uh, there's one last look at it all assembled. All the cables kind of wrapped up on it. Good looking machine. Overall, I'd say from out of the box, the time I spent putting it together, getting the power cable on there, even including making these long stick and uh, the stick welding leads, getting everything put away, I'd say, you know, somewhere around three hours is about what I've invested in it over the course of the last couple of evenings. So if you purchase one of these, it doesn't take long out of the box within two, three hours. And if you know what you're doing, I'm sure it's twice as fast as that. But you can be up and running and starting to TIG weld. Well, YouTube, we'll call that a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be shop. Hope you enjoyed it as we got this Miller Dynasty 300 off the crate, off the pallet, out of the box. Got everything assembled that it comes with. Got a couple of leads set up and got this thing into operation. As I mentioned up front, I'm not here to teach you how to TIG weld. But if it's been on your bucket list, if TIG welding is something you want to learn how to do and you want to see what it looks like for a true beginner, then, hey, these are the videos you're going to want to stay tuned into. So I'll continue to put some shorts out, like one minute or less. I'll show you some of the progress. I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that same exercise I did here. I'm going to work on that over the course of the next week. Put out like a one minute or less video. You can see what the update looks like. And then I'll put out just, you know, some five, six minute videos with a little more detail into the process as I do this lesson and continue on with some other lessons, start working on joints, and we'll just see how long it takes and see what that progress looks like. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, I encourage you to get out there and check out some of the other videos on the channel on machining, welding, knife making, just everything else going on here in the Blades to Be shop. If you like the channel, hit that subscribe button. Would love to have you join us for more videos in the future. Until next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own. I'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on some TIG welding and also working on some knives, getting ready for the Blade Show in Atlanta about six months down the road. 
Till next time, y'all take care.